Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 11, Anne Petrie. At the time of her birth, Anne Petrie was one of a handful of African Americans in the small coastal Connecticut town where her family lived. Though she arguably experienced a somewhat milder form of segregation than was found in other parts of the country, her formative years in New England and her early adulthood in Harlem fostered a perspective that clearly touched a nerve with both white and black audiences. Her debut novel, The Street, depicted the challenges facing an ambitious young black woman in Harlem in the 1940s. It sold an astonishing million and a half copies, instantly launching Petrie, who had previously worked as a pharmacist and a journalist, into the upper reaches of literary celebrity. Petrie's literary voice as a middle-class African-American woman from the Northeast was relatively unique until fairly recently, and even though her discomfort with the intense attention that her writing brought ultimately ended her career somewhat prematurely, her important role in the development of Black literature remains unmistakable. This excerpt from the opening pages of The Street introduces both the novel's main character and its setting. We see Ludie Johnson looking for a place to stay in a Harlem whose attitude towards her is as chilly as its weather. There was a cold November wind blowing through 116th Street. It rattled the tops of garbage cans, sucked window shades out through the top of open windows, and it drove most of the people off the street in the block between 7th and 8th Avenues, except for a few hurried pedestrians who bent double in an effort to offer the least possible exposed surface to its violent assault. The wind lifted Ludie Johnson's hair away from the back of her neck so that she felt suddenly naked and bald, for her hair had been resting softly and warmly against her skin. She shivered as the cold fingers of the wind touched the back of her neck, explored the sides of her head. It even blew her eyelashes away from her eyes so that her eyeballs were bathed in a rush of coldness, and she had to blink in order to read the words on the sign swaying back and forth over her head. Each time she thought she had the sign in focus, the wind pushed it away from her so that she wasn't certain whether it said three rooms or two rooms. If it was three, why she would go in and ask to see it. But if it said two, there wasn't any point. Even with the wind twisting the sign away from her, she could see that it had been there for a long time, because its original coat of white paint was streaked with rust, where years of rain and snow had finally eaten the paint off, down to the metal, and the metal had slowly rusted, making a dark red stain like blood. Follow the link at the top of this page to a wonderfully detailed short biographical essay about Petrie by the scholar Farah Jasmine Griffin. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.